Welcome back to HRN HQ Post TC. The Belmont Stakes in the books. Looking forward to the summer racing season. Sarah, not officially summer yet. We are still in late spring, upper 90s coming to Louisville, though. And I think the three-year-old action is going to heat up as well. I agree completely. I think there's a very competitive other half of the year to settle who is the top three-year-old. And it might not even be <laughs> one of the ones that were on the Triple Crown Trail. Uh, that seems to be some consensus that it might not be. I don't think anyone is all in yet. I'm assuming you're referring to Jack Christopher. I certainly am electrifying two starts uh, in his three-year-old campaign, Pat Day Mile, and then the Woody Stevens at seven furlongs. Sounds like he is going to stretch out in the Haskell. Before we look ahead to where some of the other stars might show up later in their three-year-old year, a look back right now. And I'm hoping you will actually get a vote for champion three-year-old male as a turf rider. Got to get you on board at the Breeders' Cup meeting. But right now, who is the leading three-year-old in terms of accomplishment? Not looking at talent, but if you were to vote for the Eclipse Award now, who would it be? It's tough to say, right? But I think we kind of do have to go with Mo Donegal just because of everything that he did prior to the Kentucky Derby That's performance right. and then the success in the Belmont Stakes. But obviously lots to settle still for and sure. i think that he is kind of your tepid favorite so far for champion three-year-old male yeah he's the leader in the clubhouse for me uh just even on paper if you're the type that just looks at what they want and sort of add that up the wood memorial albeit a grade two but he did win a prep and then you back that up by winning a classic race rich strike does not have a prep win maybe the 80 to one held against him somewhat and early voting has the head-to-head -head against Mo Donegal against him because he lost to Mo Donegal in the wood. Early voting did not show up to the derby, which Mo Donegal did try. All adds up for me that, yes, Mo Donegal is the leader. We haven't even mentioned Epicenter yet. I'm sure his connections think he will stake a claim to this division come Travers time. Hopefully they all stay around, though. Yes, I'm really excited to see how everybody matches up against each other. And who knows, we could have somebody else join the fray as a late developing three-year-old. You never know. Things no. could change halfway through the season. And I think we're in for some very competitive racing still to come. Absolutely. All right. Well, we both agree on Mo Donegal. No argument there. Now, racing is interesting to me, though, because not always or it's not always that the best horse is not necessarily the most interesting or the best performance. And I do think Rich Strikes Derby was the best performance of the Triple Crown season. Absolutely. And it's a great story overall with the long shot price and the smaller profile connections. We kind of saw him disappoint in a way in the Belmont Stakes, but a lot of people predicted that that would happen. It wasn't a totally... Many victory laps. Yes. Many people patting themselves on the back for their uh, correct prediction that Rich Strike wouldn't perform as he did in the Derby. But that's what happens when you don't have an insane pace set up and you're a closer from the back of the pack not able to change his running style to fit the pace needs in this particular race. And, you know, maybe he's a Churchill down specialist. Maybe he likes to ride the rail to victory. Maybe he just needs a crazy pace. A lot of maybes <laughs> they're pointing to the Travers. We'll see what kind of setup they get in there. I think uh, the lesson for those inclined that were interested, like, wow, this Derby winner 80 to one, would people miss? Ha ha. None of the touts had it. All that in play, but I think there's a, a lesson going forward for those who find this game interesting and want to learn more is a big part of the reason people did not like him in the Belmont wasn't so much, oh, it was a fluke derby, he's not that good. It's that the circumstances certainly appeared to be completely different in the Belmont than they were in the derby. And when you play these races like we do day in and day out, those puzzles are practically every race. Absolutely. And I think that exactly what you're saying, the lesson is how did he get that victory in the Derby? What were the circumstances? Can they be replicated? And the answer was no. And therefore he disappoints with not running the same race that no. he did in the Kentucky Derby. No, we'll see what he, we'll see what awaits in the Travers in terms of pace. Cause that is a big component to rich strike success or would be success in a race like that. A big component to our success is when people like and subscribe. Absolutely. And they were able to see you touting Skippy Longstocking all week. I stuck and with them. You did. You were successful with your opinion. You hit the trifecta. I did and uh, helped me make a nice little score in the Belmont Stakes Challenge. Uh, by far my best contest uh, 
performance. So I was happy about that. And, you know, in in the Preakness, I just really didn't love a horse, admittedly. And I dug in and kind of went for it with Skippy on top. Same with the the Derby with Tiz the Bomb. But in the Belmont, I did like Mo Donegal. And I'm proud of myself because I, at times, do dig in and like to have that contrarian opinion and would have loved to just be all Skippy all the time. But I knew Todd was coming in loaded for bear, and that's how I played the race. I stuck to it. I didn't overspread, and it worked out. And uh, I'm actually now, I should be ashamed to say that I'm barely ahead for the year. But I have reversed uh, some unfortunate losses in previous big days, and uh, hopefully we can chart the course and have my first winning year ever. Well, you have six months to go to hold on to it. And if you stop now, I'm like Smarty Jones, hold on for that lead for just five furlongs more. Well, that's uh, the triple crown season. Any, yeah. any other thoughts? Um, you know, I think it was important that we saw a lot of trainers take those shots with their fillies, run them in the big races, and it certainly didn't disgrace themselves. No. Nest running second, stumbling at the start. I don't know that she was ever winning that race, but mm-hmm. yeah, really, I agree showed up and ran well in there. And I think you just have to give so much credit to trainer Todd Fletcher. He knows how to build stamina into his horses and to get them to stretch out to distances like the mile and a half, very successful one, two performance for him. And powder keg topic, not looking to take a side in terms of what should happen, should have happened, whatever, but the world did not collapse with Bob Baffert not being at the triple crown. It certainly did not. And I I actually thought about it on Belmont Stakes Day. Like, okay, Derby, it was a story. It totally was. He wasn't there. That's absolutely a story. Preakness, it kind of quieted even more. And then Belmont, none of the horses he had even previously trained or the trainers who took over were even there. And it was fine. And how are those horses that he transferred doing? Uh, I think they're pointing for other races well and they didn't really show up in the triple crown preps that they were in so overall nice to have a uneventful Uneventful. in terms of that side of things triple crown and great performances competitive races you know we didn't have any superstars so to speak but that makes them more interesting betting races right no i i agree completely and uh, certainly have a soft spot for this year's belmont (laughs) <laughs> being as well as I did, but I, I thought all three had their nuance and interesting and, you know, wish things could have worked out better on the wagering side for the previous two, but uh, had a friend of mine who hit the super in the Derby. So there were big scores abounding and uh, if you didn't get one this time around. Hopefully uh, we can help you maybe in, in the Indiana Derby. Who knows? Possibly. Ohio and Derby. There's many derbies to come. Indeed. All right. We're to come to, uh, I think, Next week, I want to do a Canterbury video. Really? Yeah, Mystic Lake Derby. Speaking of derbies. So like and subscribe. You'll find out when we're back on, and we'll talk to you then.